campus and the brain of Montreal taxi drivers must be really large. That's because they must rely strongly on their spatial memory, given the multitude of orange cones around which they have to navigate constantly, forcing them to plan new routes. Spatial memory is what one needs to remember and recall the location of objects and events and the relationship between the placement of objects, such as traffic cones. It is essential for navigation and planning routes. Squirrels, for example, have great spatial memory. When winter rolls around, they remember where they had hidden their acorns. Ditto for Wayne Gretzky, who seemed to know where every player on the ice was relative to himself. Why the connection of taxi drivers to the hippocampus? That structure in the brain, early anatomists thought resembled a seahorse, for which they coined the term hippocampus from the Greek hippo for horse and campos for sea creature. The hippocampus turns out to be crucial for memory formation, learning, spatial navigation, and for converting short-term into long-term memories. That was clearly demonstrated by the fascinating case of Henry Molasson, who suffered from extreme epilepsy after a childhood bicycle accident and in 1953, at the age of 27, underwent surgery to remove his hippocampus with hopes of treating the condition. The surgery did improve his epilepsy, but it had a severe side effect. Henry was left unable to form new memories, could not remember anything from the prior 11 years of his life, and struggled with spatial memories, including not being able to remember the layout of his apartment from day to day. Back in 2000, researchers in England compared magnetic resonance images of the brains of taxi drivers to a group of control subjects who were not taxi drivers, and found that the rear part of the hippocampus was significantly larger in the taxi drivers. They hypothesized that with the complexity of London city streets, the taxi drivers have to continually exercise their navigational skills. After all, they have to plan how to take tourists from Heathrow to their hotel via the longest possible route to maximize the fare. This supposedly exercises their brain and increases the size of their hippocampus. It is known that atrophy of the hippocampus is one of the first signs of Alzheimer's disease, so it is conceivable that any activity that increases its size may offer protection from Alzheimer's disease. And now a group of Harvard University added a bit more oomph to how driving a taxi or an ambulance may affect the brain. Their study was very large and was based on analyzing the death certificates of close to 9 million people that listed their occupation at the time of death as well as the cause of death. There were 443 occupations listed, and of these, taxi and ambulance drivers had the lowest death rate from Alzheimer's disease, although the ones who died did so at a younger age. This was interesting because other occupations, such as pilots, ship captains, and bus drivers, that also involved navigation, did not have a low rate of Alzheimer's-related death. Supposedly, that is because, unlike taxi and ambulance drivers, they operate on fixed routes that require less hippocampal activity. A bit of a stretch, I think. It is hard to know what to make of this study. The numbers are not very impressive. In the general population, 17 out of 1,000 people die from Alzheimer's-related causes, while among the taxi drivers, it is 10 in 1,000. That's not much to hang a hat on. In any case, giving up one's job to become a taxi or ambulance driver with hopes of keeping Alzheimer's at bay is not a reasonable option. Maybe, though, turning off the GPS when driving an unfamiliar route can give the hippocampus some exercise. On the flip side, this would mean putting up with the harangue of others in the car who complain that you're going the wrong way. Stress is a risk factor for Alzheimer's. That for today is our Cup of Joe.